Welcome to C Programming. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to use the break and continuous statement. So we've touched on the break statement while we were working with the switch statement, but we haven't real really went into deep with what can be done with the break statement. So the break statement and the continuous statement, what's the difference? The break statement is used in a switch, for loop, while loop, or a do while loop, and it stops any one of those structures completely. So, if you call a break statement in a switch um, structure, it will completely stop that switch in its tracks and continue with the rest of the code. If you call a, a break inside a while loop, it will stop that loop and it doesn't matter if that condition is still true it will stop the while loop and continue with the rest of the code and so as well for the for loop and the do while loop so the break statement stops the structure completely now in the case for the continue statement the difference is the continue statement is used in looping structures to stop that specific iteration and then continue with the rest of the loops. So the continuous statement doesn't stop the whole repetition structure. It only stops that specific iteration. Whereas in the case of the break statement, it stops the whole repetition stru structure and continues with the rest of the code. So, let's quickly look at a real-world example where we can see the exact difference between break and continue. So, we have a main function, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a counter variable called i. i will be our counter variable for a for loop. This for loop will run from 0 to smaller than, let's make it smaller than 10. I plus plus. Okay. And this is going to be our print if break output, break statement output. Great. And we're going to copy and paste this and we're going to do the exact same thing for our continue statement. So continue, oops, continue output. Okay, so we have the following. We have a break output, just to tell the user what's the output. I'm going to add a new line and for continue, we're going to add a new line. So now I'm going to illustrate to you what's the difference between the break and the continue by using a for loop. So what we're going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to create an if statement inside this for loop and I'm going to say if i is equal or let's let's say if i is bigger than and equal to 4 and remember this is our and sign i is smaller than and equal to six and i'm going to encapsulate this whole thing into one condition so we have now i is bigger than and equal to 4 and i is smaller than and equal to 6. So what this means is that if i is equal to 4, 5 or 6, we're going to do something. And if it's going to be 4, 5 or 6, we're going to break. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the continue. And we're going to see what's the difference. So if we break, 
After the break, we're going to say print if, and we're going to output the counter variable. So percentage d i with a new line. Great. So just going to add a few new lines so that everything is nice and split, and we can see what's the difference. And the same for the continue statement. I'm going to copy and paste this display there. So let's quickly see the program in its entirety. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a break statement. And we're going to say the output for the break statement. We're going to have a counter variable for loop from 0 to smaller than 10. So there's 10 repetitions. So if i is bigger than and equal to 4 and i is smaller than and equal to 6, we're going to break. Print if percentage d, we're going to print out the counter variable and the same exact same code for the continue statement. But we're not going to say break, we're going to say continue. So let's see what is the difference and then we can make a deduction of what the functionality of the break is and what the continue actually does. Let's build and run and see what happens. Oops, let's quickly have a look at our locks. There's a mistake. Oops, the reason why this is a mistake, we can't in create the same variable again. I can just utilize it again. And we can build and run. Just going to close this. Okay, let's see. So for the break statement, it outputs 0, 1, 2, 3. And when i is equal to 4, it breaks. Now, as I said to you in the theory, if a break statement is called the whole for loop or any repetition structure is stopped in its entirety and it will go on with the rest of the code and not continuing with that repetition structure. So you can actually see this is what happens. When the counter hits 4 and i is bigger than and equal to 4, it actually stops. Okay, this is interesting. Now we can quickly have a look at the continue output. Now we can see continue displays 1, 2, 3, and then 4, 5, and 6 is absent, then 7, 8, and 9. So what happens here? If i is equal to 4, 5, or 6, smaller than and equal to 6, the continue statement is run is executed and this will have an effect that the continuous statement stop that specific iteration in its tracks and it goes on with the next iteration so this printf at the bottom in the case where i is equal to 4 5 and 6 will not have the opportunity to be executed and thus it will output only 0 to 3 7 to 9 Okay, so just a quick update then. We can take that away because the break statement in any case stops at 4. So if i is equal to 4, it's going to be the same thing. But for the continuous statement, the repetition structure continues, but only that specific repetition is stopped and it goes on to the next one. Let's quickly run it again and see that we can get the same output. Just going to close the last one. And you can see it's 0 to 3 for the break statement. And then it stops completely. The continuous statement 0 to 3, 4, 5, and 6 is not printed out. And then 7, 8, and 9. Thank you very much. This is the break statement and the continuous statement. I hope you've learned something.
Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.